Hello, this is Michael Tyler and welcome to this month's free Vectric project. This project is called the Bird Shack and is ideal for the spring season. Birds start looking for secure accommodations for raising their new family in the early spring and this fun Bird Shack project will provide that for them. All the design files were created with the Vectric VCarve software, so the project is compatible with the current versions of Vectric VCarve Pro, VCarve Desktop, and the Aspire software. For the finish, the exterior surfaces are painted and glazed to accentuate the shallow carved detail and to achieve the shack-like appearance. No finish is applied to the interior of the shack. I also designed a convenient clean-out panel that's hinged with a couple of uh, three-penny finish nails and it's secured with a brass screw when the bird shack is actually in use. You can download this free project by logging in to your VNCO account. The project includes all of the cutting files and a set of full-color step-by-step PDF set of instructions that you can see here. The rest of this video shows how I built and finished the sample bird shack and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, let's jump right in. Okay, I've got these parts sanded up and it's time to glue uh, the bottom and the front back and one side together. I just want to point out that this little divot right here, that's going to become a hinge using a finish nail with this side here. So you do not want to glue this side on. I'm gonna put this in place just as a placeholder uh, while I tape this together just to clamp until it's dry. But no glue goes on this part right here 
at all to the bottom. So I'm only gonna glue on the front, the back, and the opposite side of where that divot is. Okay, let that tack up a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna put this in place, make sure there's no glue squeeze out. And again, this is just a placeholder. This is not to be glued in. This side is just a placeholder for now. And I'll just check square. Okay. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll just put some tape around here on these uh, four corners just to get that squared up good while that dries. And I uh, might put a couple clamps on here as soon as I get this taped up. Okay, we're ready to cut the bevels on the roof halves. I've got a couple of them here. And the angle for the bevel goes towards this uh, lengthwise uh, plane area. And I just, as a safety, I always mark which direction that bevel is going to go so I don't get that mixed up uh, when I'm cutting. So I've set up the saw where I've got um, a stop here to hold that board up against the fence as I push it through. And I got my riving knife there so that everything's safe. And I'll go ahead and run these through. Oh, and by the way, uh, how I set this distance from here to, to here is I just took uh, uh, one of the roof halves and laid it on there, made a pencil mark. So that's a just a smidge over uh, three quarters of an inch from that edge. So that would be my distance from here to here. Okay, let's run this through. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and save this waste portion to glue underneath uh, the roof once I've put it together. And that'll just give a little more stability and uh, uh, a spacer. I'll cut this about five and a half inches, just shy of five and a half inches long to glue underneath the uh, roof angle there. Okay, I'll run this second one through. Okay, there's our bird shack roof. Okay, I've taken one of these uh, scraps left over from when I cut the bevels on the uh, roof panels, and I went ahead and uh, cut that to a length of just under five and a half inches, because that's the space between the front and the back panel. Then I marked the center as you can see, mark the center of that support piece and mark also the center of each of these panels. So when I glue this up, let me move that out of the way a bit, glue these up and just line up the center marks with that panel. So that'll strengthen that joint a little bit and also act as an alignment to space this uh, roof evenly uh, when I glue that onto the uh, body of the bird shack. Okay, I've uh, scooted this out of the way, laid down some wax paper, and we're gonna get ready to glue this up. So I'm just gonna turn these over and line them up. And I'll put a piece of this uh, blue painter's tape across that joint. And I'm going to fasten that down pretty tightly there. Let's trim this off a bit. Okay. 
And you bring that up. And just temporarily, I'm gonna put this square behind. And place a weight on it so it just keeps that upright temporarily. And line up our center marks there. Okay, and then I'll add a couple of clamps just to push that together while it dries. All right, we're ready to make the uh, hinges for this side panel. And I've just got a couple of these uh, uh, three penny finish nails, uh, one and a quarter inch long. And what I'm gonna do is uh, use this thin drill bit that is just about the same diameter as this uh, finish nail, slightly less than the head of the finish nail. So I'll be able to countersink that and then uh, fill it with wood putty. So I'm just going to uh, use those divot marks. Let me show a close-up of that. There's a divot mark on this side and a divot mark on this side under the tape. And I'll use those as my guide for where I'm going to drill the holes. So let me just remove this piece of tape. You see that divot mark there. So the idea is to do everything I can to drill as straight as I can for this hinge finish nail. Oh, and by the way, I've set the length of this to about the same length as the finish nail. A little bit less so I can countersink that. Okay, I'm gonna put these in just partially and uh, test the hinge action on this. And if necessary, I'll sand a little bit off the sides of this side panel to make sure that it uh, swings open and closed easily. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the tape. these clamps. Okay, I think that's going to be pretty good there. All right, so I'll go ahead and, and countersink these in all the way. Now I'll get my countersink, uh, push these in, and then I'll use some wood putty to fill that uh, hole that's left behind. Okay, now we want to uh, do a countersink hole for the closure for this hinged side panel. So I'm just gonna use uh, one of these brass number six, one of the quarter inch screws, and uh, we'll drill that with a number six, counter, six countersink. Now, if you want to, just for safety reasons, you can take a block of wood and trace a line there so that you know that you've gotta make that hole you know, right there so it meets with that side of the bottom. 
So we'll just do that. And it just so happens that this line here is in the center between here and here. So we'll go ahead and make that hole right there. screws out and screw that in and that'll take care of the hardware for the box of the bird shack normally what I do is I put a little wax on these threads that makes it easier to drive it in and drive it out okay that takes care of that Okay, one last thing I'd like to do to the box before we proceed is uh, go ahead and drill four drain holes near the corners. And trying to reduce the tear out by using a piece of tape on the inside and going slow. Okay, I'll repeat that for the other three corners. One of the birdhouse guides that I uh, read about uh, when constructing a birdhouse is it's really helpful for baby birds to have a easy way to climb out of the nest when the time comes. So they recommend just uh, gluing in some popsicle sticks on that front panel that leads up to the exit hole. And you don't have to be exact about this, but uh, you wanna glue you know, four or five of these popsicle sticks so they can uh, crawl their way out and get up to that hole. So I'll go ahead and glue these in. And I'll just space them apart to where I think a baby bird might be comfortable. Climbing out. Okay, I'll put the glue the other two uh, in there as well. Uh, footnote is there will be no finish applied on the inside of the box at all. You can read more about the reasons for that in the uh, PDF instructions that are included. But uh, generally speaking, it's not recommended to put a finish on the inside of any uh, bird box or bird house. So that's uh, to protect the health of the birds inside. At this point, I've gone ahead and removed the brass screw that holds this hinge panel in, and I'm going to apply the finish before the final assembly. Now, that may not apply to you. You might choose to go ahead and glue the roof on uh, before uh, finishing, but uh, the way that I'm going to apply the finish, it's just going to be easier for me to keep everything separate for now. But uh, first, I'm going to begin with a thinned, uh, seal coat mixture. I've got uh, some denatured alcohol and this bullseye seal coat, which is really just a 100% wax-free clear shellac. So I've mixed equal amounts. So I've got a 50-50 mixture of seal coat and denatured alcohol. And I'm just gonna apply the shellac, thin shellac mixture uh, overall, except for I'm not gonna apply any finish at all on the inside of the birdhouse uh, because that's uh, not necessarily recommended. Now, shellac is food safe, it might be okay, but uh, I've built birdhouses before with no finish inside and, and they last several years outside, so I think it'll be okay. Uh, now, what I've done with the roof, is I've, I've, I've gone ahead and uh, upside down, I've traced out, maybe hard to see these lines, but I've traced out the outline of where it's going to meet the roof. And so I know that I can go, you know, maybe a quarter inch beyond those outlines to apply the finish, but the rest of this is gonna be left uh, natural and also provide a, a plain wood surface for applying the glue. So I'm just gonna apply this overall, this thin mixture. And that will help seal the wood before I start applying my final finish treatments. Thank you. 
I've laid out a bunch of uh, acrylic craft paints that I'm going to apply to the bird shack and to the roof. I'll uh, probably do a glazing technique a little bit later on, but uh, for now I'll start with the roof and I'll just set aside the bird shack. Okay, for the roof, I'm going for a sort of a rusted aluminum type look to it. And uh, I'm gonna start with a couple of these red tone paints. This one's labeled Red Rust and I've got another one labeled Burnt Orange. But, uh, you know, you can choose any finishing technique that you like. So, because I'm gonna be doing a glazing technique a little bit later, I'm not too concerned about you know, filling and covering everything on the roof because that glaze is going to take care of accentuating the details there, so. Okay, uh, again, I'm avoiding any areas that where the glue is going to go to fasten this roof to the bird shack itself. You see, I'm sort of using a dry brush technique. I'm not doing a full coverage. In this particular case, I've not thinned down the paint at all. I'm just using it straight from the bottles. Okay, I'll set this aside to dry and come back to it and do a glazing technique uh, after doing the house portion of the bird shack. While the roof is set aside drying, I went ahead and painted the bottom of the bird shack and I'm going to apply some white acrylic paint lightly on the shack panels and then I'll probably do a, a gray color around the window and the door, windows and the door and then uh, probably paint the door uh, a blue color. So we'll see how that goes. I'll go ahead and start with uh, the white paint. And again, I'm not uh, really that concerned about full coverage. I just want to give that hint of color because this is an old shack that's deteriorating. All right, let's try this on the front first. See, I'm just uh, applying this not carefully, but uh, to avoid those window trim lines and also around the door too. After I apply the glazing technique, then this should all come together with a good uh, rendering of the detail of the carve. Okay, I'll go ahead and continue on with this and then come back to you. The acrylic paint's all dry, so now it's time to seal it before I apply the uh, glazing technique. So I'm just gonna apply a few light coats of the gloss Crystal Clear Krylon and follow that up with Crystal Clear Flat just to give a little bite to the uh, uh, technique for the glazing. Now I don't want to get the finish inside the box, so what I'm going to do is just temporarily put the roof onto the bird shack and then I'll apply this and that'll minimize the amount of uh, finish going into the box. It should minimize it by quite a bit so I should be okay. 
So I'm gonna start with just a few light coats of the gloss. And I'll reach under here, get some under there as well, and follow it up with a flap. I've sealed the paint with uh, Krylon and uh, put some light coats on there just to uh, get ready for the glazing process. So I'm gonna use this uh, burnt umber acrylic craft paint and thin it down and apply this as a glaze. So I'm gonna thin it down with a little bit of water. And I've got some rags here handy so that I can wipe this off. So it's basically a process of uh, brushing it on, wiping it off. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the front of the house for the shack. And I'm just using the brush to get in there all the little nooks and crannies. Okay, and I've got uh, some rags here. Just gonna wipe that off. And you'll see how that just accentuates the details. I'm gonna fold this up so it's a little bit flatter. I don't want to dig out the glaze from the nooks and crannies. I wanna leave that in there. Okay, I'll repeat that for the other sides. And um, after that dries, then we'll go ahead and coat that with some Krylon just to seal that paint. And of course we got the roof left to do as well. Okay, the glazing's all dry. So I'm just going to use this exterior gray glue and glue on the, the roof. Now, if you like, you can use some finished nails or if you have one, a pin nail, pin nailer to further secure this roof, but I'm using this exterior gray glue, so it should be all right. All right, we'll let that dry and then uh, finish it up with the final clear coats. Okay, we're just applying the final clear coats overall just to protect all of the uh, painted surfaces, glaze and so on. Again, I'm being somewhat careful about not getting the finish on the inside of the bird shack. So I'm using a crystal clear gloss and then I'll follow that up with some crystal clear satin. I would like to thank you very much for watching this video. Everyone will love to see your own bird shack built, so please share some photos of yours at the Vectric user forum and across your social media accounts. To be alerted to future free projects, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to this video channel and the Vectric newsletter for all project notifications. This is Michael Tyler, looking forward to bringing you a lot more free Vectric projects. Until then, be safe, be well, and happy carving!